Hello everyone, this is Craig Conant and I'm here with another edition of Sermons from My Heart. This message is entitled, Good Things Come to Those Who Wait. It's based on Luke chapter 2 verses 22 to 40 and I'll read that passage to you now. Now when the days of her purification according to the law of Moses were completed, they brought him to Jerusalem to present him to the Lord. As it is written in the law of the Lord, every male who opens the womb shall be called holy to the Lord, and to offer a sacrifice according to what is said in the law of the Lord, a pair of turtle doves or two young pigeons. And behold, there was a man in Jerusalem whose name was Simeon, and this man was just and devout, waiting for the consolation of Israel, and the Holy Spirit was upon him. And it had been revealed to him by the Holy Spirit that he would not see death before he had seen the Lord's Christ. So he came by the Spirit into the temple. And when the parents brought in the child Jesus to do for him according to the custom of the law, he took him up in his arms and blessed God and said, Lord, now you are letting your servant depart in peace, according to your word. For my eyes have seen your salvation, which you have prepared before the face of all peoples, a light to bring revelation to the Gentiles and the glory of your people Israel. And Joseph and his mother marveled at those things which were spoken of him. Then Simeon blessed them and said to Mary his mother, Behold, this child is destined for the fall and rising of many in Israel, and for a sign which will be spoken against. Yes, a sword will pierce through your own soul also, that the thoughts of many hearts may be revealed. Now there was one, Anna, a prophetess, the daughter of Phanuel of the tribe of Asher. She was of great age and had lived with a husband seven years from her virginity, and this woman was a widow of about eighty-four years, who did not depart from the temple, but served God with fastings and prayers night and day. And coming in that instant she gave thanks to the Lord and spoke of him to all those who looked for redemption in Jerusalem. So when they had performed all things according to the law of the Lord, they returned to Galilee, to their own city, Nazareth. And the child grew and became strong in spirit, filled with wisdom, and the grace of God was upon him. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Have you ever heard of the old saying, Good things come to those who wait? If so, the story of Simeon, Anna, and the baby Jesus in the temple is a good example. The coming of Christ involved all manner of waiting on God. A young maiden, a dying man, and an old widow all model hearts yielded to God. The tale of Simeon and Anna is a tale of grace. Anna's name means grace, an early reminder by Luke that his story is a story of God's free gift of self to us through Jesus and the Holy Spirit. Simeon and Anna are recognized and graced by God. That's why the aged Simeon, over a long period of waiting, and from the numerous children brought to the temple, recognized God's salvation in Christ. Simeon and Anna waited for years for the coming of the Messiah. In Simeon's case, the center of his joy was the privilege of being God's servant, and in return, God let him see the salvation of the world as it dawned. Simeon saw the baby Jesus as the fulfillment of all the hopes and dreams of the Jewish people throughout the years. In the Old Testament, God promised Moses that a prophet would come who would be unlike any other prophet. God promised David a son who would reign forever. God told Isaiah that a son would be born of a virgin and he would be called Emmanuel, God with us. The prophet Micah predicted that the Messiah would be born in Bethlehem. Anna was an 80-year-old widow who stayed close to the temple and served God through fasting and praying. In return, God blessed her by allowing her to see the Savior of the world as a tiny newborn baby. God fulfilled the promise he made to Simeon that he would not die before he saw the Messiah. When God fulfilled that promise, Simeon uttered the words that are part of the funeral liturgy in the Anglican Church, the Song of Simeon, also known as the Nunc Dimittis. O Lord, 
Now lettest thou thy servant depart in peace, according to thy word. For mine eyes have seen thy salvation, which hath been since the world began. Simeon and Anna are symbolic and representative figures. The world has never been without people like them, people with a forward look in whom there burned a great hope, people on tiptoe, the flame of freedom in their souls, the light of knowledge in their eyes, living in hope and expectation that a great day was coming when wrong would be righted, when justice would be done, when God would reveal his arm and bring salvation to mankind. One night, over two thousand years ago, the Word became flesh in a baby born in Bethlehem. One day it will become flesh again when Christ returns to set up his kingdom here on earth. Simeon also told Mary of the suffering and death Jesus would have to endure for all of his people. Most people thought of the redemption of Jerusalem and God's people in terms of freedom from Roman rule, but some had a vision of an even greater redemption, a vision of spiritual renewal. God's salvation is for all of us, but not all of us will accept it, just like some people did not accept Christ and his teachings and salvation. Those who reject Christ are already condemned. God's salvation doesn't mean that we will never suffer troubles, illness, rejection, or death. It happened to Jesus. It happened to Mary. It will happen to us, but if we endure hardships with faith, we will have a great future. It takes faith to know a blessing from God. It is the joy of celebrating God's goodness in the midst of our chaotic, suffering world. As life passes us by, how do we grow old in such a way to end well and finish awaiting Christ's message, Well done, good and faithful servant. Since many of us will end our earthly pilgrimage alone with our spouse preceding us, how will we finish when we will be alone and old for some of those years? We are never too old, weak, or sick to make a difference. Our attitude and behavior will make a difference. Like Anna, God will guide us to share the story of Jesus with everyone we meet. We have also been told of the coming Christ. Like Simeon and Anna, we are heirs of a promise. We are prompted by the same Spirit. We long to see the same face. To do so successfully, we must wait forwardly, patiently, and vigilantly. When we look at Jesus' face, we will know that it is time for us to repent and come home to our Heavenly Father, just like Simeon knew it was time for him to go to his heavenly home when he saw the face of the baby Jesus. We are just come through the season of Advent, and we are still in the season of Christmas. During those seasons, we, like Simeon and Anna, have had to wait and prepare for the coming of the Messiah. God works in a time zone where a day is as a thousand years. For those who have walked the long road of faith, who have held the long cord of life in their hands and felt all of its frays and burrs, but also found it very sturdy, and for those who have waited on the Lord while holding on for their lives, they have received the reward of joy. When our dreams don't come true in a day, we, like Simeon and Anna, need to keep in mind that God is still at work. He is still wrapping the package. He is still preparing the gift to fit our needs. We need to pray, not just for the gift, but also for patience to wait for God's unveiling. As we practice faith, hope, attentiveness, submission, and patience, we see the Christ child. Like Simeon, our eyes have seen God's salvation. When we receive the bread and wine during Holy Communion, we are holding Christ's very body and blood, which was nailed to the cross and poured out for our forgiveness. We have seen it with our own eyes and felt it with our own hands and on our own tongues. Having been saved, we glorify God and depart in peace to share Christ's salvation throughout the world. Thanks be to God. Amen. Thank you for listening to this episode of Sermons from My Heart. The text of this sermon, as well as texts of other sermons I have preached, can be found on my website, www.sermonsfrommyheart.wordpress.com. Comments and suggestions are always welcome, as well as financial contributions towards the cost of this ministry. You can reach me by regular mail at Craig Condon, 
Post Office Box 1466, Liverpool, Nova Scotia, Canada, B0T1K0. You can also reach me by email at craigcondon1965 at gmail.com or you can find me on Facebook. Until next time, may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen.